The value of mapping a value stream is not in the drawing of the current situation map. This is the easy part. The value of a value stream mapping will show once the current state map is drawn and the answer to the problem to be solved found in the analysis of the actual situation. Yet many teams use value stream mapping to uncover any improvement potential and for waste hunting. But finding meaningful and real bottom line improvement actions, quick and easy to roll out and accepted by all stakeholders is often a challenge. A good pick here are whips and inventories. I am Christian Hohmann, welcome to this episode. Here is the content of this video. Please note that you can jump directly to the desired section with the shortcuts provided in the description on my YouTube channel. You may consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell icon in order to be informed when I upload new videos. In each value stream map, we find buffers, work in progress or inventories between workstations. It is very seldom that all machines work in perfect synchronicity and it is also very seldom that machines are left long without workload, starved of supplies. Buffer and inventories will keep them busy and absorb speed variations. Work in progress and inventories are where parts or material wait for the next processing and with the proof of countless analyses, we know that parts or material wait somewhere up to 98% of their time within a factory. Yet in value stream maps, the work in progress and inventories are often misleadingly represented. A closer look shows that frequently, for a given batch, part of it is located at the upstream machine, some quantity in a buffer or inventory in between, and some part in a buffer in front of the next machine downstream. This means three distinct locations for the same production batch or item number at a given time. Do the mappers accumulate all those scattered quantities in their map? For the sake of simplicity, all these whips and inventories are most often drawn only once. But why take a closer look to whips and inventories? Inventory and whips are tied value just waiting. Inventories and WIP require handling, transportation, management. Inventories and WIP fill containers and space. This means surface and volume. The spreading of inventories and WIP hinders flow and its visibility. Inventories and WIP represent time. And time is what we want to reduce by shortening total lead time. Total lead time is the time required to go through the whole process end to end. Depending on the perimeter, this means door-to-door, -door, from the dock receiving raw material to the outbound dock for finished goods shipment. It can be from the start of production till the liberation of goods for shipment. And the only lead time important to the customer is from his or her order placement until receiving the goods at his or her premises. We know lead times are extraordinarily long compared to the required time to process material and assemble what customers want. Mainly because of wait time scattered along the process. A current value for the value added time compared to the total lead time is 1 or 2 percent, which means parts and goods wait 98 or 99 percent of the time somewhere in the process. Reducing this time is delivering what customer wants faster, outrunning competition, possibly charging premium rates for extra speedy delivery and getting cash back faster. Reducing time to cash is reducing working capital, the amount of money the company must invest until being paid by customers. In order to reduce lead time, we must reduce wait times in the process as they account for up to 99% of all the lead time. Most of the waiting happens in inventories, buffer stocks, queues and the like. For understanding how long a part dwells in such a place, Little's Law states the lead time is equal to the quantity stored divided by the average throughput. An inventory holding 100 parts with average 10 parts per hour picked covers 10 hours of throughput. This means that a part waits 10 hours on average before being moved. 
Therefore, for reducing the lead time through the inventory without modifying the consumption, the stored quantity must be reduced. Here is a simplified example of the effect of an inventory reduction. In this part of a value stream map, there are three operations. One is cutting, two is machining, and three is packing and shipment. Quantity in inventories is 100. Cycle times can be read in the data box of each operation. In the initial state, the total lead time is 1162 minutes, or roughly three workdays. Total value added time is 11.5 minutes, hence the ratio total value added time divided by total lead time is around 1%. Let's change the inventory to 50. The total lead time is now 592 minutes, about one and a half day. The sum of all value added times does not change as I haven't changed anything in the work content. It remains 11.5 minutes. But the added value to total lead time ratio is now around 2%. We've just doubled this ratio by halving the lead time. Please note that we achieve this without modifying anything in the process, something which can be of great importance when processes must be audited and qualified in case of a change. Here we avoid this constraint. As we have seen, reducing inventories and WIP accelerates flow, thus diminishes lead time. But in practice, how can we reduce inventory and WIP? My advice would be to first challenge the rationale behind the choice of the quantity in inventories or batch sizes. It could be that the initial setting is quite arbitrary, and in such a case, any other reasonable value is just as good. But the initial setting can also be logical, like matching the supplier's delivery batch size, the value is kept for the sake of traceability, or any other convenient reason. Crates and box sizes can also influence the batch size, like using standard boxes that can hold 50 parts, for example. In such a case, it is better to verify if this setting can be challenged without causing worse problems elsewhere. Another simple and effective approach is to consider process batches and transfer batches differently. A process batch or lot is a coherent quantity that is processed in a run. Here 100 parts must be machined with two distinct machines M1 and M2. A transfer batch is the coherent quantity that is moved between the process steps, here between machine M1 and machine M2. If the transfer batch is equal to the process batch, all 100 parts must be machined on M1 before moving the whole batch to M2. If we divide the process batch of 100 parts in two transfer batches of 50, as soon as the first 50 parts are done on M1, they can be moved to the next process step, M2. What's interesting here is that M2 can start processing these parts immediately, reducing the wait time in front of M2. Of course, we assume that M2 is ready and available. In such a favorable case, the operation time diagram for the two machines looks like this, compared to the initial state. And again, this is especially interesting if M2 has a cycle time equal or shorter than M1, and if M2 has no other load upon it. Sometimes such a machine like our M2 is used only to process the parts after M1 with a short cycle time, and then the flow can be accelerated by reducing the transfer batch. The limit is the famous batch of one or one piece flow. So keep in mind that it is often important to consider process batch and transfer batch differently. How to locate whips and inventories on the shop floor, especially when not familiar with the process. If whip and inventory locations cannot be seen simply and obviously, one simple way is to draw a spaghetti chart by following the material or parts movement on the shop floor. Keep in mind that inventories or even WIP can be stored in a distant warehouse or at the subcontractor's premises. Once inventories are located, it is recommended to check if the real quantity matches the value put into the VSM and if necessary, adjust and recalculate the total lead time. After that, check if process batches can be split into several transfer batches 
the potential benefits of doing this on total lead time and compare them to the cost and handling efforts of extra handlings. Inventories and whip reduction accelerate flow, but will also increase the process sensitivity to all unexpected events and trouble. Remember the river metaphor, where the water level represents inventories covering the rocks in the riverbed? The rocks represent all issues and trouble. With high water level, navigation is safe. If the water level is reduced, greater attention must be paid to obstacles and rocks. Therefore, reducing the inventory's level surface problems that must be solved for the flow to run seamlessly. A safe way to tackle problems is to lower the levels gradually and solve one problem at a time. Conversely, avoid lowering the inventories too fast because it would expose too many problems at once. In a nutshell, inventories and whips are not always properly documented in value stream maps. Inventories and WIP are important levers to accelerate flow. Going for inventories and WIP production is usually easier because we let the operation unchanged. No modification of process, no need to requalify, retrain, update work instructions and the like. There are multiple benefits to reap with inventory and WIP production, like lead time reduction, space and volume reduction, lesser needed working capital, faster quality issue detections, etc. But all of these are not easy to evaluate. Before reducing inventories and introducing transfer batches, check the possibility of unexpected drawbacks versus expected benefits. This approach is not always a good way to go. Once inventories and whips are reduced, expect to see problems that were invisible until then, Souls are the rocks that become visible in the riverbed. Accelerating the flow is usually a good way to feed continuous improvement, as many prerequisites must be secured for a seamless and fast flow, like mastery of quality, process control, and so on. But this is another story. Do inventories, whip and batch size reduction earn significant gains? To be checked in the context, but usually yes. Are such actions quick and easy to put in place? Usually yes. Are they well accepted by stakeholders? Yes. If you liked this video and found value, please give me a thumb up and share it. Thank you for watching and see you soon on one of my media.